We've seen the crash test footage, and deep down inside, we know what we really think of stereotypical Volvo drivers. But for those who are unfamiliar with the saucier side of the Swedish brand, might be surprised to find that Volvo has been elbows deep, sometimes actually quite successful, in car racing. Polestar has been racing uh, Volvo since 1996. Throughout these years, a lot of uh, enthusiasts have asked us, can you, can you make a road car? And uh, this is uh, one example that uh, we, we use to show the performance potential of a Volvo as a, as a road car. So this is, you could say, it's uh, Polestar's interpretation of the S60, the way we, we like it. The people uh, that work at Polestar have one thing in common, that is that we're all of us are car enthusiasts. So this car represents how we would like to see an S60 that uh, we would like to have. It's, it's a very close relationship and uh, we, uh, we always work together with Volvo in everything we do. Yeah, we, we get a lot of uh, inquiries from people uh, that are interested in what we do and we have said that we will build six of these cars uh, to sell to various individuals and uh, we perhaps um, inspire Volvo to build cars more like this because we would really like to be involved in something like that. We really like the shape of the S60, we've made some subtle changes. The main uh, changes are to accommodate the wider wheels. We also made some slight adjustments for aerodynamic reasons. The front fenders of this car are made of carbon fiber and the rear fenders are made of steel as well as we also made some alterations to the rear door to accommodate those wider wheel wells. We've made changes to the engine, it has more power of course, it's a manual transmission, uh, we improve the braking performance, uh, we use bigger wheels and tires to Im improve tractions and so on. And this, uh, these things put together really enhances the dynamic qualities of this car. So when we built this car we didn't go to any extreme length as far as saving weight but we did have it uh, on the top of our heads when we chose uh, for example seats and so forth. For example the seats are manual and not electric. Uh, a substantial weight saving was made going from an automatic transmission to a manual. We saved about 40 kilograms which I believe is close to 100 pounds. Uh, the total weight saving is around 100 kilos or 220 pounds. We think this car, we didn't build it with the ambition of uh, building a monster. We, 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 at least it's our, it was our ambition to make something that's drivable, livable, but still, uh, still with a sporty edge to it. And that's what we tried to create. A, a Volvo S60, the way we would like it. We certainly wouldn't mind if, if Volvo would, would like to build something like this. And we, we'd, be, we'd be very happy to be involved in, in a project like this on a, on a slightly larger scale but it's really a decision that Volvo would have to make, of course. This mean little screamer is far from Polestar's first foray into over-the-top tuning. Before the S60 was this nasty little number, a 450 horsepower C30 whose twitchy road manners and peaky engine made it feel like a slot car uncaged. Also decked out in Swedish racing green, AKA bright blue, the new S60 tackles speed with an entirely different tack. How much has Polestar evolved in its quest for edgier performance? We picked the perfect inclement weather day in typically sunny SoCal to find out. So we couldn't have ordered up more appropriate weather to test this Swedish car on American roads. Here we are punching all this power through the wheels. We've got light snowfall coming on, frost indicator on the dash, and inappropriately enough, we're running summer tires. So we're really putting this car into a unique test. So if you climbed straight out of Polestar's 450 horsepower C30 and into this 500 horsepower S60, and you didn't know the performance numbers, you might think that this is the tamer car. It's got all these civilized features on the inside. It's got a lot more sound insulation. You know, it really feels like a production car. You've got Alcantara inserts in the steering wheel and the shifter, but aha, it has a six-speed manual, three pedals, which you can't get in the US, making this a bit of a unicorn off the bat. Now that you're in the car and you're driving it, you rev it past 2,500 RPM and everything changes about this car. I'll show you right now. 
turbo boost kicks in and you get this great expanse of torque sent to all four wheels. And then when it needs it the most, it diverts almost 100% of the power to the rear wheels, eliminating that neutered understeer tendency that a lot of all-wheel drive cars have that'll actually push it through the corner because it's overdriving the rear wheels by a factor of 1.5%. Now the standard off-the-rack Polestar Edition Volvo S60 is a really streetable car with a lot of torque all around. It's not going to hit you over the head with its power, but when you climb into this car and compare it against that standard Polestar, you get an edgier ride. You get lower ride height, it feels more glued down, it's lighter, the chassis is stiffer. Everything's a little bit more buttoned down and serious and focused, but it's not nearly as edgy as that 450 horsepower C30. So this car is a one-off that Polestar has kind of built to show you exactly what they can do when they set their hearts and minds to it. And, you know, Andreas says that it's a car that if he and his team were designing a car, it's what they'd want it to be. One thing I love about this car is they incorporated a proximity sensor where you get this progression of lights that tell you how close you're getting to the car in front of you. However, that was jerry-rigged in this car to convey engine RPMs. So you go from green to orange to red, depending on how close you are to red line. I think it's brilliant. If you hopped into this car and had no idea what was under the hood, you would be in for a shock. You get this sort of deep engine exhaust note, which sounds like, you know, any tuner could have slapped a muffler on and gotten that sound out of it. But once you lay into the power, power. But the harder you push this car, the more it gives you that edgy feeling that you're never going to get from a standard Volvo. We attach a lot of significance to horsepower ratings in our culture, of course, and 500 is one of those magical numbers that everyone is striving towards. And, you know, of course Volvo's playing that game too. They could have made it 485 or 475, but, you know, you really start to feel this car's true spirit when you drive it just a touch over the limit where you think it should be performing. So the encouraging thing about squeezing 500 horsepower out of this engine is that they didn't go to extreme measures. They basically kept the internals stock except for a reinforced crankshaft. Of course there's a bigger turbocharger, of course there's quite a bit of work done on intake and camshafts and all that stuff. But it's mostly rooted within the realm of reality. This is something that we could potentially see in a production S60. Admittedly, this is a bit of an exotic experiment for Volvo, or more specifically Polestar, you know. Um, I like when tuning companies act like rogue divisions that aren't totally obeying their corporate masters and they're going off the leash a little bit and exploring what they can do. And that's a wonderful thing with this car. I mean, you definitely feel an edge that you're not going to notice in any other Volvo, let alone a Volvo Polestar. I don't know how soon we're actually going to see a 500 horsepower Volvo that you can buy right off the showroom floor. But for an exploration of what the brand can do and how far they can push performance with a manual gearbox, this, to me, is a step in the right direction. If there's a surprising postscript to this counterintuitive tale of conservative Swedes gone wild, it's that an unidentified buyer has plunked down $300,000 for one of these mutant spin-offs, and that Polestar plans on building five more of these bad boys, making this turbocharged monstrosity considerably less of an automotive unicorn than we initially thought. For Car and Driver, I'm Bassam Wasif. Thanks for watching.